I'm very excited to show you one of our brand new features in FTCU. It's a feature that many people have asked about and um, we're excited to bring it to you. It's called our font importer tool. So what this tool does is allows you to take um, like a font that you might have purchased online that's in like a machine format and add it to the software to where it can be used with this text tool. And so this is very cool and it's pretty easy to use. So let me go ahead and click on this font importer tool. The one thing I do want to mention with this is that the the fonts do need to be in a machine format. So they need to be in like a PES, a um, JEF. It needs to be in, in a format that a machine reads. It can't be in a format that's specific to just a software program. Um, like ours is WAF. Well, WAF does not work on a machine, on any machines out there. It's a format specifically for the software. And then you save it into a format your machine reads. So the fonts need to be in a format um, that machines read. And if it's not in that format, you probably do have some software that you can open up those fonts in. All you need to do is, is open up each letter and save it. So as you can see um, here, I'm going to just go through a few things on how this works. So first, if you've created any fonts, they're located underneath this drop down right here. Um, you can add a new font with this tool and you can edit fonts. And when you um, create a new font, you have the ability to go and search for the folder of where those fonts exist. And when you select them, it will bring them into this panel right here. We do also down at the bottom have a convert to outlines feature. And what this means is if you ever think that you're going to resize the design slot and you want to make sure that you can, when you resize it, it will change things like density, things like that as you resize, you'll want to make sure you convert those to outlines um, so that it allows the software to regenerate stitches as it resizes. So that's just another option. So let's go ahead and let's get started. You can see here, I didn't point out you can put your author name on it if it's one that you've created because you can create fonts in the software now with this tool. Um, you can digitize them yourself utilizing the um, just the tools that you have and in the software for creating satin stitches and run stitches. And then you can actually import them um, for each letter and turn it into a font. So just a little side note there. So let's go ahead and let's create a new font. So I'm going to select new font. And when I do that, it gives me the ability to name that font first off. So I'm just going to um, name this one um, sample. And I notice that my recording software does not allow me to use the letter M. So I'm just going to do um, SP font 01. So I'm just going to name this really quick and you can see that um, now I can put the author in here, spacing, uh, word spacing and height if I want to make some changes to the custom height there. Um, so once I have that new font, you can see that I do have it, a name here. And now I need to go to the folder that has them. So I actually already have a folder. So this would be like you save the fonts that you have into a specific folder on your computer. And you just need to go to that folder where those are located. So all of those designs are located right here in my font 01 um, folder, the ones that I want to use for this. And so I'm going to hit OK. And when I do that, it loads them in right here. And there are some pretty neat little features here. So um, you have this mapping that's A to Z in uppercase, A to Z in lowercase, 0 to 9. And you have an auto button here. So what I'm going to do is you have to bring these in basically like one at a time unless um, they are labeled um, something like A, B, C, D. So let's go ahead and let's focus on um, these numbers first. Let's do zero and I'm going to hold down my control key and select the number one. 
I'm going to scroll down here, hold down control and click two, three. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting all of them at one time, holding down control as I click on each number. So I'm going to do zero through nine. And then what I want to do is come down here. I'm going to find where my zero is, where that starts, starts right here. And I always, it actually is above it, so it needs to be above it right here. This is the space for zero. I always come to the first one, and I make sure that it's selected in here. And then I'm just going to click this zero to nine button, and it says letter zero will, will be set at your reference letter. This is my reference letter. And let's go ahead and hit yes. And you can see it dropped zero in the right spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it automatically put those in at the right location. So it's really neat. So let's come in here now and let's let's do all the capital letters. So let me select in the A. And now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna find all of the capital letters here. D, E, F, G, H, um, this is I, J, K, L, M, N, O. And see all these um, letters right here, you can see all the lower cases are using one digit, one letter. So N for lowercase, two Ns for uppercase. And that's just how I saved them when I created them. So um, let's go, we need, we did O, so let's do P. And I'm holding down control as I select these. So R, S, T, U, Let's see, U, let's, where's my V here? W. Let me go ahead and click off of that one. Let's see, X, Y, we have the Z. So this one is actually the B. So I'm going to select it back again. So I have those selected. I have A right here. So I have all the capital letters selected and I'm going to click A to Z. Okay. So they are located in here. It dropped them all in, in the proper location. And now I can do the same thing for the lowercase letters. I can come in here, select that A. And let's just go in and, and uh, select all the lowercase letters here. R, S, C, T. So once I have all of these selected, I'm going to hit, I'm going to come in here and click right inside of this lowercase a because I need that reference point and then click this a to z. And um, so let's say, for instance, that you're getting a collection that um, they're not really numbered right, you don't have them in the right order, and so you need to actually bring them in one at a time. So I skipped a letter here in here somewhere. Um, let's see, let me scroll down here. So let's come up here and you'll notice that I have some other symbols here. So as I scroll down here, you're gonna find that um, these symbols, a lot of these do exist in here. So the difference um, with this one is, let's say I can't use an auto feature, that's okay. I can select it, find where it's supposed to go and I can click and drag it into place just like that. It's that easy to do. So I have like this dollar sign here. Let me click and drag it into place. Um, we have a percentage. Let me click and drag it into place. And 
so you can see I can grab that one put it into place I can come in here and I can find where they're supposed to be and I can actually add them now one thing that I want to point out too that's really really cool in the software um, some of the things I really love um, when you're working with these fonts now that you have them in location you can take a look at them and you can say you know what I think I need to position that one a little bit different and so like this uh, this little money symbol right here let's say that I want to make sure that when I'm typing in the font that the bottom of the S is in line with all the other letters and that this piece right here extends down below so I can come in here and I can actually select it and I can drag it and you can see I can see a preview of that so I can drag that line drag it down to where it's in line right here because I want to make sure that it's maybe in line with anything else that's in the um, that's on the screen for the text so let me come up here and let's take another look at like the letter J here you can see I'm off a letter here I did I forgot I didn't select one of the right ones so please ignore that um, for instance right here you have this G and this F where this is where it ends right here well we don't want the bottom of the F to be right in line with this letter E right here we want it to be more like right in this position right here so that when it stitches out it ends in a very similar location to the others so you can see that right there and then we come into the G I can do the same thing just clicking and dragging it into place it's really that easy to do um, and so you can adjust these letters as you need and um, it's fairly simple this letter X I definitely would drag it down so that the bottom of that is along this line so the bottom right here and here so you definitely want to take a moment and take a look at the fonts letter M I would want to move it down a little bit the letter N I would want to move it down just a slight bit so that this part of the N is touching that line really easy to do this J obviously is going to be coming down about right there I'm kind of looking at these locations here letter L so I'm not going to worry too much about these just show want to show you how you do it and you can nudge these a little bit by using these arrows right here it it nudges it up or down just a very little bit or you can even delete the letter so you have a lot of different options here so once you get it how you want you've already given it a name now all you have to do is hit save and now it's going to save this font into my font directory right so I named it SP underscore font 01 so let me go ahead and close this and let me grab my text tool and let me click on the screen here to bring the text up and let me go in and find that font that I just created SP font 01 and hit apply I can put whatever name I want to you can see it's right here on the screen and you can see that I did not adjust and this is a this is a great example here so I took time and I adjusted like the X you can see that the bottom right here is in line with this line here you can see with the M as well that this part overhangs but you notice that I did not adjust the letter E I didn't make it up that far so you can see that the bottom of the tail ends right here which it really needs to be down a little bit and so that's like an example of of uh, how like what it looks like if you don't make the adjustment but even if you didn't make the adjustment you can go back in and you can correct it uh, that's one of the other beautiful things about the software uh, in this feature is that you can actually edit that font that you imported but it's really neat that you can actually bring them in so let me go back to let me change the font first because I don't want to have that one um, selected at the time here 
Let me go into this, um, the font importer. And from the drop down, I'm going to choose that font. And you'll see that it's now loaded. So now I can come in and I can say, you know what, that C, I didn't adjust that. I can click and I can drag it down, make the adjustment. We know the letter E, you can see that uh, that part rests right along that line and that's why in the um, example I showed you in the software, it was off a little bit. So you can come back in and you can make changes to it. I can come back now and I can figure out where I messed up in selecting letters. I have A, I didn't select the letter B, you see that here? So I could come in and I can delete these and um, I can start over and I can bring those back in, um, those letters back in and put them in the correct order. So that was actually a good thing that it that I didn't select the letter B because then I got to show you that you can actually adjust and make changes. So sometimes things happen for a reason, right? And um, it's really easy to work with this font importer. And the, the one thing that I want to point out again is that when you're working with a font, you're going to save that font to your computer. And then you're going to you know create a new font. And you're going to um, click on this button. You're going to browse to that location where those designs are located, the A, the B, the C, the D, and whatever other characters there. So, you know, once you do that, you just got to make sure that those are on your computer and you got to make sure that they're in a format that is a machine format, like a PES or JEF or, you know, um, DST in a format that a machine will read. And if it's not in that, you probably do have software that you can open that font into and grab the letters and save them individually into a machine format so that you can load them into the software. But this is the font importer. It's a really neat tool, very handy, easy to use, and we hope that you enjoy.